Welcome to the meeting. My name is Aaron Jorgensen. I'm the program supervisor um, of the BEARS program. And uh, we're going to go ahead and um, just get started. So we um, first want to thank you for attending this evening um, and being part of the um, this meeting. We will be uh, recording this meeting for those families who are not able to join us at this time. And so that will be available and that will be sent out as a follow-up email tomorrow. Um, and then also I just wanted to recognize um, just the current state of things in our nation and in our uh, district where um, there's so much going on um, just even just locally with our air quality. And thankfully today is much better than it has been. Um, and everything that is going on with in the, the nation with uh, um, the push for racial uh, justice and um, the fight that is ongoing um, and as well just in this new um, dynamic that we're in with uh, online learning as we've started this beginning of this, of this school year. We know that it is um, all these cause a lot of stressors and um, we recognize that and um, we um, are here to help support you and, um, and your students. So for tonight's agenda, we'll have uh, introductions and then we'll go into some of the current state guidelines. And then we have um, uh, program updates. Um, so in the current program, and we'll hear some of, from some of our Bears teachers. I want to go over the recertification process that many of our families will be doing this year, and then we'll have a time for question and answers. And so um, at any point, if you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and put them into the um, Q&A portion. Um, and then also later on at that time, we'll be able to um, take questions um, from individuals. But if you can first put it into the type it in, that would be helpful. So um, our current state guidelines. So um, this summer, Governor Newsom approved Senate Bill 98, which provides the um, California Department of Education with authority to waive sections of education code. And that in specific, specifically relates to a program hours operation, um, program fees, and the pupil to staff ratio requirements for our programs. And then um, right now, um, the um, state legislature has approved the Senate Bill 820 on Gav uh, Governor Newsom's desk to be signed and that is expected to be signed soon. And that will continue to um, the waiver of program fees. And um, what that means is that for any families that are opting to not be an in-person learning or in our case, where the district is not currently offering in-person learning, then families um, will not be charged a fee. Um, if and, and when we are able to open in-person uh, programming, then um, families that are participating in person, would that waiver would not be in effect and they would be charged um, their appropriate fees. So um, I wanted to just introduce our staff and um, this is our um, our teachers for each site and then their instructional assistants. And so I wanted to, um, uh, they are uh, all on um, this call. And so I want to give them a chance, um, just checking and making sure. Um, all right, so uh, Dr. Roach, um, she is our leader at BAM and I don't currently see her on the call, um, but she is our leader at BAM. And then I will go ahead and go next. Um, Nazreen, could you go ahead and say hi? Hi, everybody. This is Nazreen Gold, a Bears teacher at Jefferson Elementary. Great. And we'll go down the list if we could just go ahead with Johnny next. Good afternoon. My name is Johnsonika Battle, otherwise known as Miss Johnny, and I'm at John Muir with the kindergartners in through second grade. Hi, families. I'm Miss Latanya. I'm also at John Muir with Miss Johnny, and I have third through fifth grade. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. Divya. 
Oh, you're muted, Divya. Okay, better? <laughs> there you go. Hi, I'm Divya Vaughn. I am the Bears teacher for Malcolm X Elementary School. Hi, I'm Joan Ludington, a.k.a. Miss Joan at Rosa Parks. Thanks, Joan. Hi, I'm Paulette Butler, and I'm at Sylvia Mendez with TK through fifth grade. Thanks, Paulette. And I, I just saw Lynn, and I'm not seeing her right now. And I'm Lynn Myers. I work at Washington with Miss Jackson. Hope you make that up. Yeah, so that was Lynn, and she's at Washington with um, I'm right here. Jackson. Do you hear me? Yeah, it's just, it's just breaking up a little. All right. Great. And then also, um, uh, um, that is our staff for our sites. And then also, um, Ash, I want to introduce our administrative assistant as well. Um, Ashley, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Ashley Stepney, and I am the Bears administrative assistant. Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. And then, as, um, as I said, we have also have our instructional assistants. We, um, and uh, they, and, um, and we have them listed there as well for each of their sites. I want to make sure we recognize them. We didn't, we didn't make them have to put in, be in front of the, um, in front of the call with everybody else. But I um, also want to recognize them as well. So for um, some updates. So at this time, we are not collecting fees. I just mentioned what the state is saying about that. Um, so we do have that waiver. Um, that is in place. And again, that's for all families who are not attending um, the program in person. And, and right now in our district, that is not possible. And so all families are eligible. Um, we have set, at the beginning of this year, we have set the program hours to be 2.30 to 5.30. Though we're finding that the, um, many of our teachers are being very flexible with that and acting to meet with families when they are able. And, um, and so they have expanded those times that they're meeting to into the school day. Um, and know some are even meeting later in the evening. Um, so I just wanna, I wanna recognize that. And then I um, just wanna remind everybody that uh, meals are available. Um, they are available for pickup on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And that's at any school site. So if you are, if your child, for example, attends Jefferson, but you live closer to Rosa Parks, then you could go to Rosa Parks and pick up um, meals there. And those will be for two days, um, when, in, in the day that you would pick up. Um, student meals, uh, and then just to continue on that, they can be picked up at any of the school sites, regardless for the students enrolled. And also um, there are, that includes the middle school sites and the high school. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up and that um, I notified the teachers of, but I want to make sure I notify all of you on the call on our meeting, is that there are supplies available. We just heard through um, a community member, a community um, organization that they have supplies available, such as paper, pencils, markers, um, art supplies. And um, so if you or in your family um, would like to be a part of that, please notify your Bears teacher and they will make sure that gets to me. Um, and we will work out a system which that can be picked up. It'll likely be through the Ed Hub, um, which is located at the Berkeley Adult School. And then lastly, um, I did want to highlight, just was on a call today with the City of Berkeley. The City of Berkeley, we are been meeting with them regularly um, to make sure that we are able to serve the needs of our families. They contacted me about a month ago, a little over, to let us know that they had an, um, they're having an in-person afternoon program from two to six, and they are continuing that program and let me know just today that they have a few slots that are available. So please look for that information. I'll be sending out in the follow-up email tomorrow 
once I get that from them, but they would, um, you would need to sign up for that as soon as possible if you're in need of um, that service, which is in person from two to six at, I believe, five of the different school or different um, city parks across the, the city. So um, now I'm going to turn it over to some of our teachers. And so first I'd like to, um, to call on Ms. Johnsonica Battle or Ms. Johnny. Um, and she's going to talk a little bit about the academics. Good afternoon again. Um, so I'm going to talk about the academics. Academic excellence is a huge part of our mission for all Bear students. Some of the ways this is supported during these, during these times online are weekly check-ins with our Bears family through email or phone calls, letting all parents know we're here and the times we're available to support children's academic needs. We offer daily literacy support, math support, and general homework, general homework support to help ensure that each child is successful. During this time, some Bears teachers are able to be in some of the classrooms and connect and support your children during the morning breakout small group learning time. We're able to address any students with their individual learning plans, connecting with teachers, reaching out to the RTI coaches to ensure that all children with IEPs get the help that they need. Um, an example of what this might look like at this time for say literacy would be, could be st story time in a large whole group. It could also be a small group time with a few students reading the same book together out loud. This could also be a chance to have one-on-one -on -one reading time with your child and just the teacher depending again on the individual child's needs. All children have different academic needs. We're here, we're flexible, and we're ready to help out in any way that we can. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnny. And then we'll um, go to Ms. Joan, um, and she'll talk a little bit about what we are offering for enrichment. Well, thank you very much. It's really important for children to have positive and productive interactions with their peers and their adult role models. And Bears teachers are here to do just that by providing enrichment classes like gardening, music, cooking, dance, singing, and art. And most importantly, we really love to play games with our children like scavenger hunts, Pictionary, and charades. So we hope that you look over our menu of offerings and join us for some great times. Thank you, Joan. Um, and then I wanna go on to um, the recertification process. This is for families who are currently enrolled. And um, so many families will need to go through that process this year. Um, and, um, our administrative assistant, Ashley Stepney, will be um, contacting families to let them know about the process either by mail or email, I should say, or by um, phone. And then Ashley, would you like to talk a little bit, or could you please talk a little bit about that process? Sure, so what you can expect from the recertification email is an emergency card update. I'll need a proof of residence proof of income and you can choose um, the proof of need that will keep you in the program. Um, if you do not have an email listed on our database, you will receive a call um, and somehow we'll get those forms to you. I wanted to add, um, I wasn't, I thought about this right before we started our meeting. I wasn't able to add Ashley's email address here. Um, however, it is just like all our email addresses are first and last name. So it's Ashley Stepney and you can see that on the call underneath her name or her image. Um, Ashley Stepney at berkeley.net. And so I will be adding that to our follow-up email tomorrow. But please, if you do not, um, if you're any of your, your emails or 
phone number has changed in the past year, um, please do contact her and let her know what your current email address and or uh, phone number is. Um, it's very important for us, not only for this process, but also just for us for um, emergency contact information. Um, so uh, now I just have a, a chance to go through over any questions and answers. And um, so one thing I did want to touch upon, which has been um, a question um, during this whole time is about in-person programming. So as of, as of right now, um, we do not have a timeline as to when we will be able to provide in-person programming. Uh, more and more, I will say that it appears that that will happen at some point this school year. Um, if you'd asked me about that a year or a month or two ago, I would have said it looked like we would not be doing that, but more and more in hearing from the state um, and then other districts, it appears um, that they, uh, this is, um, that this will be happening at some point, not only for our program, but for the school day. Uh, we, with that, um, for in-person programming, um, we recognize that some families will not feel comfortable in sending their children. Uh, and so we will um, be, um, we will continue to offer um, online programming for families who are not comfortable with sending their children in person. Um, during this time. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, just close out for our um, for our um, presentation. And we'll go to um, I'm just going to go to our questions and answers. So again, you can type in the question and answers um, in the uh, in that area uh, at the bottom of your screen. Um, and then also, um, we will um, take um, we will take questions. And so, one I have here is: um, Do we have to pre-order um, request meals ahead of time, or can we just drop in? Um, Joan, are you saying that you'd like to answer that question? Sure thing. I pass by Rosa Parks every day and there's just our wonderful food operators there ready to hand off a meal to you without any reservation. So just stop on by any, any school. Um, thank you, Joan. Yeah, and, and that's, yes, you can go um, at any of the sites um, and get that. And so, um, that is, a, that is available um, at any time. And then, um, let's see, our, um, so I do see that Dr. Roche has joined us. And um, unfortunately with our, um, with our current setup, we are, are not able to have her come in unless I'm able to get our moderator to do that. I will check um, with him. Um, and then again, if there's any if there's other questions, if you go ahead and um, put it into, type it into the question and answer box. All right, um, I will go ahead and I'm going to open it up. Um, teachers, is there anything else that you have had parents asking you about that you think would be important to go over at this time? All right, I see a new one. Um, so uh, it says, question says from Jocelyn, it says, I was wondering about how many students will be in groups together when in-person bears starts again. Will kids have to stay in the bubble of their teacher classroom and bears? That's a great question. So um, the current guidelines from the state, the, um, the, um, oh, um, uh, the, um, 
the health department um, are uh, 14 students with every two adults. And so it's a maximum of 16 total. And that can, like I said, can consist up to 14 students and up to two adults. And um, I, uh, we would look at having, um, probably we would start with less and um, that will less than 14, um, more like 10 to 12 students. Um, but then, um, so those students will be together um, and then they would be, um, once we have, um, when we are, if we are not, if the school district is not offering any in-person services yet, then, then we'll just have the one bubble. Um, but if there are, um, if we do have in-person learning going on as well during the school day, then we will be coordinating with those, um, with the teachers to ensure that um, we were, that we'd work to have the bear students together to make sure that they continue in the bubble. Um, uh, one thing that was mentioned that has come up, I know during our time, uh, Ms. Uh, Paulette had brought, had um, talked about how there are um, funds from the Berkeley Public Schools Foundation um, in which they are wanting to help out any families in need. And so if you, um, if you need support in whatever way, um, please you reach out to the Bears teachers, or you can also reach out to, if you um, know your Office of, of Family Engagement uh, Specialists for your site, they also are helping families with that. Um, but you can always come to us um, and, we will, uh, and we will help you. And then um, we can also, um, you can also, like I said, talk with the Office of Family Engagement. Um, are there any other questions? Jamaica, you can ask question. Um, uh, this is this is Jamaica Moon. I'm Kalisa Daniels' mom. Yes, um, hi Jamaica. I wasn't able to get on the Zoom, so Miss School has me on the phone. Okay. Um, but I but I was just curious. Um, so my daughter is um, you know, a McKinney Vento student as well as has an IEP, as well as is a child of color. And I'm just curious, like through this whole time, not, not one person from her school has reached out to us as a family to ask if there's anything that we need, right? So, and that's kind of a problem for me because a lot of the times people like myself don't like to ask for help Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, and it's, it's embarrassing sometimes, you know, during times, you know, like, I didn't even know that there was even certain resources that they're offering. Like, I just found out that they're giving people hotspots, you know, mm -hmm. and my, my kids have been struggling trying to be on and off, getting kicked off of our internet, getting reprimanded by their teachers when they actually have something there to help us. Mm -hmm. And nobody, I never even knew until I was talking to Miss Gold, Gold that they offered that. You know, and so I just, you know, wish they kind of, you know, kind of reached out to the families that, you know, that are on that high risk list to see if they need anything during this time, you know, and I'm not speaking just to, to their, you know, I'm just speaking about my kid goes to Jefferson. Um, so I'm speaking about Jefferson Elementary, you know, and so I, you know, I'd like to know who is the contact if I guess if I need those things, who do I go to? But yep. I found out that I can, I'll go to you, go to Miss Gold or whoever. Yeah. Thank, and thank you for take, for really persisting to get on. And thank you, Miss Gold, for getting Jamaica on your phone. Um, and thank you for, um, for taking, you know, for, for speaking up and, and letting us know. And so, um, I will say, and I didn't include this in the presentation, but I will say uh, I would recommend first going to just hearing about the hotspots. Um, I know that those are in high demand. However, um, the Ed, Hu um, Ed Hub 
um, which is at the Berkeley Adult School. Um, it's um, at the back entrance to the Berkeley Adult School, uh, which is off of San Pablo. Um, at the back entrance, they that's where you can go to pick up um, technology, including um, hotspots. And so um, that is where I, I would recommend going there for hotspots. And then um, and then I will follow up with Ms. School to make sure that you we we make sure that you get other support that may be needed. And I do apologize on behalf of the district that you haven't had more outreach and um, and and providing of support. It's just like I'm curious, like. I know there's a list of, of students who have certain things, right, that fall under certain categories. And I would think that they would think that those students should get first access to things like hotspots, right? So I know they're, they're, they're in high demand, but for who, right? So, so if I feel like, you know, we've been struggling with this for a long time. Like, I didn't even know that we can even get that, right? So thank you so much for, you know, letting me know that that's even an option but my gripe is really more so with jefferson and not theirs you know what i mean because well, they have all the they know everything about i've been at jefferson for the past 12 years right they know my daughter they know our situation why hasn't anybody reached out and found out if this family who is a mckinney vento family which means homeless who has a child of color, black, African American, who has an IEP, has not been reached out to. I don't. I don't understand. There's not like a whole long list of children. I mean, I'm, I'm from Berkeley. I, it might be a long list, but it's not a whole long list that they couldn't reach out. You know. And I just feel like you know who, what other families are not get, getting this information and are not finding out. And and you know because of all the work that I did when I was at Jefferson about the, with the Black Families Group and the village, trying to make families feel um, welcome and uh, uh, like they belong, you know. And half of the time, working families that are kind of trying to barely make ends meet aren't going to ask for help, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, you know, thank you guys for, you know, providing this platform for us to be able to, um, you know, find out about things, but... Me and myself, I work full time, so all three of my kids are pretty much teaching themselves. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I, my sister, who, who we're staying with temporarily, she's a teacher. So she's here with five kids, te teaching her students, plus trying to help my baby with the IEP, and it's just a mess. And then they're all getting kicked off the internet. So it's just, I just worry about other families like myself who are not uh, reaching out to get help or no one's reaching out to them. You know? Yeah. No. I, again, thank you for for taking taking the time to connect and to share share the concerns and um, it just reminds us of our need to um, reach out to make sure that we're keep, we're reaching all of our families and um, thank you for thank you for speaking up. Yeah, and then same thing like with Kalisa, like Miss Gold Gold is really good at sending the invite and you know for her to get on. She hasn't been getting on because there's no, I, I'm not even, nobody's there to kind of guide her through that part. Like by the time school's over, you know what I mean? She's, it's time for her to get on to after school. I know she needs to log on there, but there's, I haven't had any support and help around figuring that out for her. And so I apologize for that because I'm at work, you know? And I finally get to a point where I have a regular job, right? Like I've been working so hard to get, you know, independent and get out of the situation that I am. And here I am trying to get better. And then this happened, you know, the pandemic and all these other things happen. And it's just like, as soon as we try to get two steps ahead, you know, mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. is pulling us back. But I, but I want to make sure that she participates in her after school program, you know, and it's just been, it's just been a mess for, for me and my family, you know? Yeah. yeah I recognize that uh, it, yeah, that's one thing that we are working to try to make easier for our families because we don't want to make it, um, they already are having the connections in the school day. Um, so um, I guess I'll say this to you and to anybody else, if there's um, a, a way um, that we can make it easier 
for our families to know or to have the links and to get on. Um, that's something that we have been working on. Um, and, uh, and so, um, yeah, if there's any, any, any suggestions or any way that you could help, we would appreciate knowing. Is there any way they can hook a link in the student's Google Classroom, even though it has the school day? Yeah, that's, we will ask. Um, I know that many of our teachers have reached out to the school day teachers about doing that. Um, and we will um, circle back to the teachers, but also to the principals, because they can help with that and ask if that can be included. I know um, we've had some luck with that, or I shouldn't say luck. We've had some support in that area where some teachers are putting in the link so it can be easily accessible, but I, that is a good point. And I will double back on that to um, see if we can get more support in getting that out there. Yeah, cause like someone like Alisa, she has a um, teacher that helps her, her I, you know, with her IEP and stuff. So that may be something that she can help with. You know what I mean? Like, if I if I need that to be added, maybe she can help me. So um, if that's something we can do, just let me know, and I can possibly see if she can help get Kalisa set up. Great. Well, thanks again, Jamaica, for taking the time to go bum bum to be able to call in and make sure that we're getting um, that we're uh, able to help you. And then also, I would um Mentioned too, I believe that um, the family engagement specialist at your at uh, Jefferson is. Um, oh, I'm blanking now. It used, be, it used to be Lily. Oh, she's not there anymore. No, she uh, is moving to one cl uh, closer to her home, I think. And I did not hear that. Yeah, it, yeah, it was Lily Howell. That's so I was going to recommend too. With, to make sure we get you connected, but I will um, I, I will reach out to Ann Caligari, the director, and, and see and reach out to her as well about making sure that our families, all of our families who may, who need support at this time, are getting reached. Um, okay, thank you, thank you so much. And, thank, um, yes, thank you, thank, thank you, Ms. Thank Bullock, you, well. thank you. Bye -bye. Okay. Um, Another question was brought up was um, if there's, uh, if any of your families can help as far as donation, um, especially in relation to like technology hotspots. Um, so if there's a way they can do that, um, they are, um, the Berkeley Schools Fund is really, has, has been the one who has been handling that. And so um, I would recommend reaching out to them and, um, I don't have their contact information, but um, that uh, from the, either the, the, the BUSD website, um, berkeleyschools.net, or um, you could also just Google it, um, but the Berkeley Public Schools Fund, they, they have been handling all of that and would be able to help with that. Um, let's see, and then, uh, are there any anything else anything from um any other family or any other questions um again you can type it into the q a section um or teachers or anything else you can think of that um families may want need, would appreciate getting an update or common questions that we've been having that would be good to just review I have a question, Erin. Where would parents go to see our offerings? Is there, how would they be updated on new classes or new groups forming? Um, so the best place to get information is through the teachers and through, um, through their emails or their Google Classrooms. Um, and so um, that's, that's how we have been handling um, the sharing of information since it has been very much site specific. Um, and so, um, if you do have any questions around that, please do contact your teacher. Um, and then also, um, that is a good point. Do I think that's something that we need to work on as well? It's something in the summer where we had a, a one link for a Google Sheet, which provided uh, information. 
Um, and so that's something also that I will either work with the sites individually or the teachers, um, or we will look at if we can provide some more of that in a more central spot. All right. Um, okay, well, I, um, unless there are any other questions, um, just to um, reiterate, I will be following up. Um, this is being recorded. And so we will share this with, um, we'll be sending out to all families, um, sending out a letter mm -hmm. through our teachers um, to, with this information as well as just highlighting some of the um, some of the um, major um, major topics that we reviewed this evening. Um, and I, I believe um, I don't see anything else. And so I just wanted to recognize also, um, thank you um, for the um, encouragement and the recognition from some of the families on our Q&A. Thank you for, um, we are here to serve you. And especially in this hard time, we want to make sure um, that we please do reach out if anything is coming up. Um, and um, we will help in the best way that we can. And, um, and just also, if you just are needing to talk with somebody, I mean, we know that the kids need that. And that's something that many of our teachers are doing. I've been able to be fortunate to be on some of the calls and see that. But also, if any of you as adults need support, you can always reach out to us as well. Um, this is something that we are, we'll all get through this time um, and it is hard for everyone and just recognizing that. So if um, any, if anybody um, needs some support for just your students, but also um, for you as well as adults, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, and um, we are here to, to help. So um, uh, thank you, unless there's anything else that any one of the Bears teachers would like to add, I'll just give a, a chance for that to happen. One of the things, Erin, that a parent asked me a couple of weeks ago is when school does start back and get back to normal, will there still be any busing? Like from one school to the next? Good question. Uh, yeah, so that has been discussed. Um, and um, around transportation, it will be much more limited just due to the social uh, physical distancing that's necessary on the buses um, and they would be training students in new ways of entering the bus and exiting the bus just to limit contact however my understanding is that there would be um, some form of limited um, transportation available I think it's really more going towards those families who are really would need it um, to be able to offer that. Good. Thank you, Divya. Um, I think that just, that just reminds me, there are many, um, many parts of us working to being an in-person that will take some time to go through. Um, so, um, and just on a call today with um, City of Berkeley and some and some uh, some of their officials, and so um, just um, knowing that while we are looking at in-person programming, it will take some time for that to happen, and to make sure that everybody is safe, our staff and our students, and um, so that will be a lot that would have to be done before we can do that, but. Um, that is something, again, that, that, that the district is working towards at some point. Um, one other question we have is that if there are any more hotspots, I just had an update that yesterday from our Berkeley Public Schools Foundation, um, and they said that they, they are in high demand and they're, uh, they don't have a lot. However, they are, um, they are, um, I would recommend checking at the Ed Hub, and um, that is the Ed Hub is open on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And Monday and Friday, it's from 
12.30 to 2.30, and, uh, or sorry, 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock, and on Wednesday, it's from 3.30 to 5.30. So be sure to check an email because like they closed one day last week because of the snow. Yes, they have had to close because of the, thank you, Paula. They've had to close because of the air quality. However, um, hopefully that will be, um, that was, hopefully that's getting better for all of us. Um, yeah, two parents asked me this question for timing. Thank you for sharing that. And then, um, let's see, one other question. Uh, let's see, I had one other. Um, I just was going to do one more check. Um, there was, uh, I'm not able to find it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that would be it. Um, okay. Um, I don't see just, oh, here we go. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, and so uh, teachers, any, 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 anything else, any last words? To three parents asked, I don't know if they are joining today or not, but they asked me, so what are you guys going to planning to open in a, uh, per, in, in a person? So I say, I have no uh, answer for this, but if you are in the meeting, ask this question from Aaron. He might be having a better answer. So three parents just text me. Ms. Gul, if you couldn't make it, ask Aaron. One is gonna. Is there any possibility in a month or two? So. Yeah, and I will. I will say um, yes. There is a possibility in a month or two, um, but it would take us um, some time for to be able to have this. Um, the state has come forward with um, how that would look and what that process looks like. It's a minimum of five weeks for that to happen. Um, and so that means that we are three weeks in the clear in the county, which in right now, I believe as of last week, I saw that we were not in the clear and it's a certain level where of new cases. Um, so it would be three weeks when which the county has improved and is in the clear. And I forget the level, it's like below seven cases per hundred thousand or something um and then we'd have to stay in that for another two weeks for it to be granted so we can apply for it after those three weeks and then we'd have to stay with that another two weeks to be able to have that waiver granted to meet in person so um uh it is it is possible in um well it'll be more than a month but uh, the question was one to two months it is possible um however um, there's a lot that needs to be done before then, and um, we will definitely be in touch with families once we have an idea of how it would look. And just to also um, want to make sure I do include this, is that um, our, our in-person programs, I did touch on this earlier, but our in-person programs will be much smaller. Um, we have to stick within our bubbles and bubble groups, and we would give priority to families based on um, based on uh, families who um, are in McKinney Vento, um, foster youth, uh, as well as then um, families based on um, their income. And so that's how the BEARS program works. Thanks for, thankfully, we have not had to go into the um, uh, uh, not, into that of having families have to be ranked as far as them being able to have a spot in the program. However, we will have to do that. And that's based on state guidelines um, to be able to offer um, our in-person in services to families. So um, just please do remember that um, and that we will be in contact about um, that process once we have more information. Okay, uh, with that, um, uh, thank you to all of our Bears teachers. Um, they have been doing a great job of um, quickly cha changing the course back last March and doing what we could do to help our families and um, have continued to learn all kinds of new um, skills, especially around technology. 
as we've been um, switching to our online format. And um, so thank you to the teachers and, and the instructional assistants who are all doing such great work in helping your families. Um, and um, thank you families for, um, for um, entrusting your students with us. Um, please do reach out to us if there is anything we can do to help support you during this time. And um, with that, I want to um, wish you a great rest of the evening and thank you for joining us this evening. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>